All right, episode 437. What are we doing here? Okay, so I'm delivering my augmented AI course again live. And this is on July 26th. It's actually my birthday. And uh, so that'll be next month. And the theme is moving towards human 3.0, how to survive and thrive in the world full of AI. And uh, yeah, I got human 3.0 conversations, skill sets and mental frames, integrating AI into your life and work, and a whole bunch of resources. Essentially, it's going to be a lot of hands-on actually showing you the way that I use AI and adding a whole new section above and beyond the previous class, which talks about how to basically get ready. What things do you actually have to learn? And a big part of this is so that you could tell the other people that you care about, especially young people, like people in high school, people in, about to go into college, people in college, or people changing careers who just have massive anxiety from all this AI stuff. This is basically going to give my outline of what I think is coming and how to get ready for it, like how to not just survive it, but actually be anti-fragile so that you actually benefit from it. So that is next month, uh, the end of July. My friend Monica is launching her cybersecurity leadership masterclass. Uh, goes over tons of stuff, uh, which I talk about here, and it's uh, just a really good course. I think she really has a good perspective on this, uh, and I've got a link here to sign up for the class. Doing a webinar with um, Elastic Security. And that's coming up uh, Tuesday, June 25th. And uh, change so some headers. Doesn't really matter. Um, all right, my work. So few new essays this week. Uh, so the first one is talking about um, ratings and basically how I believe AI is going to basically do like this, this uh, one, two, three punch. Uh, one is teaching us things. Second is testing us to see how well we know that material. And the third one is giving these scores. And uh, I, I think it's going to be really crazy. You should you should check out the whole post. Um, this is the post here. And I basically talk about like the different scores. I talk about like ways and components of the score that, that are going to be pretty crazy. And uh, it, it starts to get a little bit scary. Uh, quite quite a bit scary, actually. Okay, imagine you're walking around, you have like the score above your head. Because because it's not just going to be for a test that you took or whatever, right? It's also going to be for like, um, hey, instead of me having to vet every single person that I want to date, or a college having to vet incoming people, why don't they just send you to do this Astra test, whatever that is, and this is some random company, a made up company, right? But they're going to get your blood work and they're going to do all of this. Your personal life history. They're going to, and keep in mind, this is an AI avatar asking you these things. There's a camera on you watching your facial expressions and your body language. And keep in mind, this is like GPT-6 or GPT-7 or whatever. So it's like extremely advanced AI. So it can read your body language. It knows when you're lying. It knows when you're uncomfortable about a thing. But it's going to ask you about your traumas. It's going to ask you about your, like, your beliefs about different things. It's going to ask you about morality. It's also going to test your technical skills, ask you to actually build things. It's going to deep dive into your opinions on, like, tons of different things. It's going to look at your base core knowledge, math, physics, biology, history, economics, all these other disciplines. It's basically going to understand like how smart you are, all the different stuff that you know, your maturity across lots of different areas, like emotional maturity, um, your wisdom, things like that. And then um, it's going to ask about your, your finances. It's going to ask about like how much money do you make? What, what is your earning potential? Um, why do you think you can make that much money? Blah, blah, blah. All of that combined, think of like a three-day test where eight hours a day you're talking to this AI avatar and the whole time you're on camera. And a lot of people are thinking, why would anyone sign up for that? The answer is because they want to know that about themselves. 
they also have some measure of trust that the, the videos aren't going to go out, but that which isn't going to happen. Those companies are absolutely going to get hacked, right? So that's that's a mess. But um, doesn't it doesn't matter. Everyone's going to get hacked in this way. So it kind of just like that doesn't matter. Um, so you have the videos. The AI does the analysis. And keep in mind, the AI knows everything about human psychology. It knows all the subject matter that you're talking about, history, physics, you know, security, like all the different things that you're good at. It knows how good you are at it based on the fact that it did the the interview with you. So it's like taking you into deep water to see how deep you can go, right? Well, now, now think of companies who want to hire somebody. They don't have to do all this deep vetting, deep vetting, a a, a three day set of interviews or a two week set of interviews with like five different groups of people. And they're asking like dumbass questions that does not work. You see how bad people can be even after they go through the interview process. Okay. In current hiring methods, there's like a gauntlet of all these interviews. That gauntlet of interviews does not yield great people a high percentage of the time. It does sometimes, but not nearly as much as it actually should, (laughs) given like how extensive that is. Now compare that with somebody who's like, hey, look, if you have an Astra score, I would love for you to share it. You don't have to. We're not going to ask you to do it. But of course, hiring managers, companies, assuming it's legal, that's going to be a problem. There's going to be some regulation against stuff like this because it's going to be so good that it's going to instantly put great people way, way above. And because it's so good and it's because it's so merit, meritocratic, there's going to be massive pushback. But I think that it's going to be so useful and so powerful for startups that they're going to do it anyway, especially This especially matters in a world of AI because people are going to have much smaller teams. It's going to be like me, the founder, and I need a total, total badass to be like my chief of staff because they're going to run my 13 different companies, which are mostly AI powered. But I need a total killer to be that person, which means I need a high Astra score, specifically in like fluid intelligence, raw IQ, uh, communication skills, like all these particular things. And what's crazy is I can describe in an interview to AI exactly what I need, exactly what my product does. In fact, the AI will just go get all that stuff. It will then understand that perfectly. Then it will look at someone's Astra score and just basically find matches and be like, look, um, this person is pre-vetted. Their Astra score perfectly matches. I validated the Astra score is real, which Astra will also do. And by the way, Astra, this is a made-up company. It's not real. But there will be many Astras. So now it's like, hey, do you want to talk to them? Yeah, sure. So you get on a call with them and you're like, hey, yeah. So, uh, I mean, the AI says uh, you're really good. My, my DA My DA, my personal digital assistant, says you seem to be really good on paper, which means through all this AI vetting. So you have a conversation, and what do you know? You you start talking about books. You start talking about what the way you see the future. You start talking about ambition, and they're like, oh, yeah, I'm reading those uh, same books. I'm listening to those same podcasts. Yeah, I just worked out this morning. And you're like, holy crap, this person's just like me, total badass. Yeah, perfect match. What do you know? What are the odds? Quite good, actually. Quite good because of the Astra score. So now think of companies can just rely on the score. What about dating? Dating, look look at all these questionnaires people are filling out and they're not happy with the dates. An Astra score is going to be a way better measure of a person than this. And of course, there's going to be nasty, gross Astra scores. Keep in mind. It's going to be like, oh, how pretty is this this person? How rich is this person? And they're going to have like a whatever, an Omni score. 
And it's going to be like douchebaggery score, essentially. So you shouldn't think that just because it's AI generated, that it's a good measure of a person. That, that's not true. What I'm talking about is something that's really deep across multiple facets of a person where it actually is kind of capturing how good they are and how valuable they are. Um, and importantly, how useful they are for a particular application, such as working inside this company, working on your particular problems, or if you're trying to build a family and you want to know like how good of a dad is this person going to be, how good of a mom is this person going to be? Well, now it's focusing on those areas, which were covered in the interview. The point is, many, many things in society require and desire to vet. This is universal vetting. That's what this is. This is universal vetting. You need to vet people to work on a company with you, to do a project with you, to be a babysitter for you to be a dog sitter for you, to be a life partner, right? So these types of scores, the better they are, let's say this Astra one is the best one. It's like a seven day on-site, in-person talk with all these different AIs and they're hitting you from different angles. They're watching you do jumping jacks. I mean, it's gonna be crazy. Oh, by the way, you submitted a blood sample, right? Now it's looking at your genome. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's why when I came up with the name, I, I used AI for that. Astra. Uh, I forget what it means, but yeah. Uh, what's that movie with, um, not Ethan Hawke. What's the one where like the guy wasn't chosen to go on the flight? A anyway, um, it's dystopian. Okay, 100%. All this stuff is dystopian. All this awesome stuff is simultaneously dystopian. The question is, can we take it in good directions? Right? That's the only question. We know it's going to go in bad directions. That's a guarantee. I mean, have you seen humanity? Of course, it's going to go in bad directions. The question is, can we limit some of those? Can we control some of those? Can we discourage some of those and steer them in positive, like human 3.0 directions? Like, ideally, you would have something like an Astra score that's super deep, it's super knowledgeable, but it's not like, man, not as attractive. Man, oh, there could be a flaw here. We, we don't talk to flawed people. A real Astra score is going to be like, hey, this person is nuanced. And this person has, you know, warts. And this person is like, flawed and, and complex and multiple layers and blah, blah, blah. But I think at the core level, you guys could be soulmates. And here's a list of questions to like initiate that initial discovery period or whatever. It's not about perfection. Not, not in the human-based world. Not in the human 3.0-based world. It's not based on perfection. It's based on deep matches. On the things that matter. And spending less time getting confused by surface-level things. He's very attractive. He's very rich. But you find out three years later, you know, he's, in your mind, he's garbage, right? Because he doesn't treat you well. Like, he treats people poorly, right? And the whole thing that he postured with you was all an act, and you just wasted three years of your life. And you, you were supposed to be having kids by now. So, like, there's a positive way to go with this. And... I think we need to realize, one, that there are positive opportunities. Two, bad things are going to happen from these types of scores. And not be confused in thinking that because bad things happen mean the whole thing is a wash. First of all, it doesn't matter if it's a wash because it's going to happen anyway. So either way, you should be prepared. So lots of different ways to get value from this type of analysis. And here we are. We're like 15, 20 minutes in, uh, or whatever, 10, 15 minutes in. And uh, that was one essay. Okay, next one, the fast, slow problem. You know what? This one's short enough. I'm going to go ahead and perform this one. 
Uh, is that what it's called? Performing. Okay. So I've been obsessed lately with the concept of slow versus fast. I'm calling it the fast slow problem. It refers to the speed and amount of dopamine that you get from a thing. So in the distant past, an apple would have been a treat, and especially an apple pie, because it took so long to prepare and enhance those apples, which were by themselves not easy to come by. That's slow. From the difficulty of finding the thing and from the long process of creating an apple pie. A box of donuts, on the other hand, is fast. First of all, you could just walk in and say, give me a dozen donuts. And second of all, a donut has been engineered to taste better than 100 crates of apples. So if you eat like six donuts, one after another, and then you bite into an apple, it tastes like a 3D piece of like printed styrofoam. Like it just does not compare to a donut. And there's lots of other examples of this, like porn being the fast extracted version of sex, TikTok being the fast extracted version of reading a book or watching a movie. And I worry that this is what's happening with human relationships, like dating. They say that young people don't want to get into relationships or have sex with each other anymore. And evidently it's because they would rather do other things. And this feels very much like a fast, slow problem. What if this is as simple as teenagers and young adults having more fast options on their phones and TVs, and they are so good that the slow options of companionship and relationships simply cannot compete? It's one thing when a donut competes with an apple but in this case, the fast versus slow problem might actually be affecting the future of the species. I'm not sure what the complete answer is here because I'm sure there are places where fast versions are simply better and not just faster. But what I do know is that I think we should start being very cautious about replacing slow versions of things with the fast versions of things. There is meaning in doing things slowly. Slow walks while holding hands, reading physical books in natural light, and making apple pies from scratch. I think we should do our best to figure out what those slow, meaningful things are and ensure that we keep as many of them in our lives as possible. All right, that was that one. All right, list of hard one life lessons. I think I'm going to do a separate one for this, but essentially it's a list of pretty decent wisdom here. Um, yeah, I'll give you one. In practice, weak people behave very similarly to evil people. Don't tie yourself to either. So that's the vibe there. It's a whole bunch of those. I do want to move to a model where I support a lot more of my work with memberships, courses, and revenue from apps that I'm building. So I would love for you all to actually subscribe and uh, become members of UL. So you just go to danielmiesler.com slash upgrade. And you can become a member and there's just so many benefits. The biggest one is the actual community, which it's just the most amazing people that I've ever met. It's uh, it's great. We got a book club, monthly meetups, significant discounts. So I that um, augmented course, it's going to be $200 off if you become a member. And guess what? Becoming a member is only 100 bucks a year. So you kind of like make up for it instantly. And there's just a whole bunch of other stuff. We actually have physical meetups. It's pretty cool. All right, stories. House just passed a bill that bans DJI drones from using FCC frequencies. Disgruntled ex-employee costs over $600,000 by deleting 180 test servers uh, using a script that he found on Google. Wells Fargo fired over a dozen employees for faking keyboard activity to look busy. <laughs> yeah. 
AWS has added FIDO passkeys for MFA, and root users must enable this by July of 2024. I love this. I don't think there's anything better recently for security than passkeys. Like maybe the, in like the last 10 years, like it's just really good. New York Times source code was stolen using an exposed GitHub token. I feel like this is an older story. Maybe it happened again. iOS 18 will let you automatically record and transcribe phone calls through the phone app. I have the beta. I need to get that going. Canada is proposing uh, potentially life in prison for hate speech and maybe even preemptively restrict their freedom based on anticipated crimes. Based on what I saw happen to Jordan Peterson, who I'm not a complete fan of, by the way, uh, especially lately, but what I saw that Canada did to him, not a huge fan. Linked out, LinkedIn is rolling out AI career coaches. Yeah, see my essay above on the Astra scores. That's what we just talked about. AI and LLMs are transforming cyber insurance. Yeah, I really need to do a whole piece on this, but real-time risk adjustments and pricing adjustments based on that risk, AI plus insurance, yeah, that's spicy. It's going to be good. And when I say good, I mean good for insurance companies. Scale came out with a controversial stance that they will hire on merit and merit alone. This thing is worth reading. Okay, skip that one. Tesla shareholders have backed Elon Musk's $56 billion pay package. Got two things here where I left the subtitle in there. Do not like. Okay, yeah, so they basically approved $56 billion pay package. This feels very Atlas Shrugged to me. Basically give the actual builders anything they want because there's so few of them left and they're so special. I really like how it's like pro entrepreneur, but I feel like it comes with a lot of toxicity. Like give Buck Reinhold a harem because Buck deserves it. And there's cheering in the background. I, I think we need like a healthy hybrid, right? where we have this massive respect for founders, builders, creators, entrepreneurs. But we build in the assumption that, look, it's not just the 1%. They're not special people. Why isn't everyone doing that? And that's what, that's what Human 3.0 is, is getting everyone into this category. So guess what? There's no more God complexes because everyone's supposed to be that way. Yeah, great timing for this one. Evidently, Musk has had sexual relationships with multiple SpaceX employees, including a former intern, which he hired onto his executive team. And this is according to Wall Street Journal. Now, yeah, I got complex thoughts on this. Um, I think radical honesty and like voicing your desire to be with somebody, all of that is like, I think Musk is actually doing that better than most people. The problem is he works with these people, right? So <laughs> I've got a fake example here. Julie, great work on the Montague project. I admire you. You should have my babies. <laughs> and keep in mind, this is not a real quote, but this is kind of the vibe, right? This would be wrong if nothing happened from it. Because even if that worked out, if that conversation worked out, her career was great, his career was great, like no problems, it would still be wrong because it has so many chances of going wrong. And this is why this is not allowed. Because the, the allegation here, which nobody knows if this is true, but the allegation is that uh, some of the women supposedly said that they were given this offer, they declined, and then they got screwed because of it, right? They didn't get the promotion, they got fired, wh whatever, whatever the case was. That's being alleged. So, alleged, alleged. Jesus. All right, California has the biggest wage gap in the U.S. Um, this seems to make sense to me. It's like 
it's the most extreme version of a big city. So you're going to have higher highs and lower lows. So that makes sense. Uh, we just broke ground on America's first next-gen nuclear facility. And this is a piece by Bill Gates. Uh, really cool to see him working on energy the way he is. Russia replaced the dollar and the euro with the Chinese currency, the yuan. Yuan? Yuan? Yeah, something like that. There's a fungus that can eat plastic. Uh, I'm worried what else it can eat. That's just me. Apple left out a lot of the small updates in a WWDC keynote. So, ooh, I already use this. So I speak Spanish pretty well. And I type in Spanish a lot. Um, and it's not auto-correcting me. It's letting me type in Spanish mixed with English. Absolutely love it. So that must be already turned on. Flashlight app has new animations. Widgets are easier to resize. The uh, Vision Pro shows your keyboard in VR. And uh, Mac OS has uh, some new nostalgic wallpapers. Apple Vision Pro lets you watch House of the Dragon, which is the new Game of Thrones thing, in an updated, immersive, Iron Throne room environment. Spatial Personas in Vision 2. I just updated mine um, and recorded a new persona. Someone wants to FaceTime, let me know. And uh, <clears throat> got an argument here that Jupyter Notebooks are the fast food of coding. <clears throat> Convenient, but often unhealthy for long-term projects. And uh, Jensen Wong told Caltech grads to pursue $0 billion markets, which are markets with no current value, but huge future potential. And I just figured out what I love so much about Jensen. He's like a permanently nice version of Elon. And we've all seen Elon be nice. I, I actually love Elon. I, I think he's amazing. When I see him talk about space or the future, or saving humanity, I'm like, this guy is literally my hero. Then I see him posting memes on Twitter about politics, and I'm like, do not be this person. Do not let people make you into this person. And I get very angry at him. So it's great to see that you can have like an Elon type, like an Atlas Shrug type, who's also nice. It's amazing. Got someone predicting that generative AI will actually increase the demand for software engineers over the next 20 years, not decrease it. I think there's some validity to that. I think it will also decrease it, but also increase. The question is, which one wins out? I think probably increase wins out in the beginning. Widely held view that sperm counts in men are dropping around the world may be wrong, according to a new study and University of Manchester. So. I tend to go by uh, the quality of these things to determine if I include it or not. And if I really want to look, I run it through Fabric, uh, Fabric and see like how it scores the paper. Curio curiosity, curiosity, yeah. Argues that perfectionism is about optimizing at the wrong scale. I love that, I love that statement, I love the sentence. Perfection is about optimizing at the wrong scale. This reminds me of another thing that I really love. The worst way to lose is to win at the wrong game. And that's what this reminds me of. Perfection, uh, perfectionism is optimizing at the wrong scale. Love it. 38% of web pages that existed in 2013 are no longer accessible. Derek Sivers explains why you should create a now page. Ah. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time. I don't currently have one up. That's because I'm gonna have it in my personal API soon, which will be all AI powered, basically a DA, it's gonna be cool stuff. Um, that's gonna take a little bit longer. I'm not actively working on it yet. Waiting for the tech to evolve a few more months. Okay, ideas. Increased production of goods and services after AI. And how does that make sense if 90% of people don't have money to buy the stuff? So I'm talking about the economics there. Got someone arguing that in a world dominated by AI and robots, the key to human survival isn't being smarter, but being more mediocre. I included it just because 
I like alternative views. Pop culture's oligopoly, dream machine, AI model. Yeah, Lumen Labs, this thing's blowing up. NVIDIA Warp, infinite content ideas generator. You can now design and manufacture your own chips. LLM Mojo, Olama, new version, enhanced GPU discovery. SQLite is likely the most used database engine. Pretty cool argument there. Uh, there's a new Starlink coming out, a, a tiny one that's really good for like camping and RVs and stuff. And uh, Max Lighter has a simple but powerful tip. Ship something every day. It doesn't have to be big, just something you can point to. Recommendation of the week. I recommend you check out my list of hard-won life lessons that I was talking about earlier. The full list is pretty good. And the aphorism of the week. The sad truth is that most evil is done by people who never make up their minds to be good or evil. The sad truth is that most evil is done by people who never make up their minds to be good or evil. Hannah Arendt.